A series of Masonic signs have been found hidden in paintings of Scotland's bard Robert Burns by one of the nation's greatest painters. Tiny letters and symbols such as a comet and hooded figures have been painted in minute detail invisible to the naked eye in a series of paintings by Alexander Naismith a contemporary of Burns. According to an expert on the Bard, the existence of the signs was only uncovered when a lost portrait of Burns, who was a high-ranking member of the Freemasons, was cleaned and the owner spotted some writing on it. After scrutinizing photographs of different Masonic signs, Burns' expert and writer Jerry Brannigan believes he has discovered a representation of a comet over Burns's shoulder. He also identified a cluster of numbers on his forehead and the letters M-A-R-A on the side of his head. Hand. Mr. Brannigan spent two years scrutinizing the painting, completed in 1787, and other works by Naismith. He believed the tiny marks were deliberately placed as Masonic symbols in the paintings by the artist who was also a member of the Freemasons. The numbers and letters on the poet's face and head could have been used to indicate Burns' status as a royal archmason. The comet could be interpreted as a symbol of the Masonic blazing star. You won't see the letters on such a general photo as you would need to get far closer. Brannigan told he presented his theory on the Da Vinci Code of Paintings for the first time at a conference held by the University. University of Glasgow Center for Robert Burns Studies at the Robert Burns Birthplace Museum in Air. The lost portrait in which the first marks were discovered was only authenticated as a Naismith painting in 2013 after being bought at an auction covered in thick dust. It is believed to be the fourth version of a portrait which was painted by Naismith. The other versions hanging in the Scottish National Portrait Gallery in Edinburgh, Calvin Grove Art Gallery in Glasgow and the National Portrait Gallery, London. The painting, dubbed the Shaw Burns as it has the word Shaw inscribed on the back of the frame, is currently on display in Dumfries House in Ayrshire on loan from the private owner who wishes to remain anonymous. Brannigan, who co-authored the book Robert Burns in Edinburgh and helped investigate the painting's identity, said he had been alerted to the symbols after the owner contacted him to say he thought he could see a name on it. He said, I took lots of photographs of it. Because of the way the painting is painted, with oils and glazes, you can only see some things if the daylight is shining on a particular angle and you can hold the painting to move it about. One of these photographs showed up an area in the background over Burns's shoulder and it turned out to be a representation of a comet. This was a bit of surprise. That led me to look at two other photos and I discovered two areas on it his face, one on his forehead, where there are numbers or figures. Then there is another little row again to the side of his forehead, at an angle, with four or five letters. He said Halley's Comet was in the sky when Burns was born, a sign said to herald the birth of a great person, but he said it could also be interpreted as a symbol of the Masonic blazing star, one of the most important symbols of Freemasonry. Brannigan also said scrutiny of other photographs revealed two areas on Burns's forehead where there appears to be a series of symbols and letters, possibly signifying Burns' status as a royal archmason. He said he had uncovered similar mysterious tiny letters and symbols in the other paintings of Burns by Naismith which he had examined at the Scottish National Portrait Gallery and Calvin Grove Art Gallery. Brannigan said landscape paintings by Naismith also contain possible Masonic symbols including a tiny shadowy figure which can be seen in a view of Edinburgh from the west which could represent a hooded monk standing in a darkened entrance an allusion to the Knights Templar. It is known Burns visited the village of Roslyn with Alexander Naismith. Nearby is Roslyn Chapel, which gained worldwide attention for its supposed links with the Knights Templar and Freemasonry after the publication of Dan Brown's hit novel The Da Vinci Code. Brannigan said they would have been very aware of Roslyn Chapel and its connections with Freemasonry. It is more than likely that Naismith and Burns would have visited Roslyn Chapel together. This is a bit like the Da Vinci Code for paintings, the same kind of mysterious signs and emblems that run through everything. There is a Masonic saying of hidden in plain sight. It is very true as things are kind of hidden right in front of you. Some of these letters are only one millimeter high. They would be done with the strongest magnifying glass he could get and a brush with one hair. He added, I sometimes wonder why Naismith would do all this. It is all very well putting a mark on the painting to identify it in case copies come along. I think sometimes Sometimes he is just putting so much detail into paintings that he is just doing it for a bit of fun. Nothing is there by accident. Imogen Gibbon, chief curator and 
Deputy Director of the Scottish National Portrait Gallery in Edinburgh said Brannigan had examined the portrait of Burns in the gallery as part of his research using high-resolution photography to look for marks not visible to the naked eye. She added, It's always fascinating to broaden our knowledge of the works in our collection and open up different areas of research. So we'll be interested to hear how the photographs might support his theories.